Hi guys, welcome to meiosis. You need to be able to describe why meiosis is important, describe the process and explain how meiosis creates genetic variation. <coughs> so in terms of the specification, we are here. We will be looking at the crossing over independent assortment. We'll be looking at the division and the um, actual process of meiosis. But before we start, we've got to explain why all the cells of the body will have mutation of three chromosomes in per 13 rather than only two chromosomes. Okay, so that's follow up our previous lesson. And what we've got here, that mutation, okay, extra chromosome uh, will take place in gametes that form zygote all cells derived uh, by mitosis, so all cells derived from a single cell by mitosis, so mitosis produce genetically identical cells. Right, here we've got a question, what is an allele? And explain the appearance of one of the chromosomes in figure one. So we've seen questions with the alleles before, it's a different form of uh, a gene, and the appearance of the chromosomes. So what can we see? There are sister chromatids joined by centromere. And this is due to DNA replication. Right. So what is then meiosis? What's the importance of the meiosis? So uh, meiosis is the process of cell division to produce gametes. So homologous pair of chromosomes, so remember one from mom, one from dad, will separate in meiosis. So one chromosome from each pair will enter a daughter cell. So the genetic variation is uh, caused by the independent segregation of homologous chromosomes and the new combination of maternal and paternal alleles by crossing over. So what's the advantage of this? Increase the genetic variation and improve the survival chance. So the process of meiosis is divided in two, in meiosis one and meiosis two. What you need to remember when the cells are entering the meiosis too, there is no interface. Well, interface it's really short because DNA is not replicated. So let's have a look at the first division of meiosis. So it's slightly different than mitosis. So we've so got the same stages: prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. They are, they are just numbered. So in meiosis 1, they call prophase 1 and so on. So in prophase 1, what we can see, rather than seeing a single chromosomes, we can see homologous pairs of chromosomes called bivalence. In this prophase 1, the process of a crossing over will be taking place, which we will be talking about soon. Metaphase, as you can see, there's not single chromosomes lying up in the middle of the cell. There are bivalent, so homologous pairs of the chromosomes line up in the equator of the cell. This we call independent assortment, because as you can see from the picture, there are many combinations. So sometimes maternal chromosome could be on the top, paternal on the bottom, or all the way around. In the anaphase, then, We've got a process called independent segregation with those uh, when those chromosomes, so not chromatids, but chromosomes will be pulled apart and uh, divided into two daughter cells, follow up cytokinesis and telophase. In meiosis 2, then, we've got again the same names of the stages and meiosis 2 takes place exactly the same as mitosis. But what's the difference? We already got two cells here as the products of meiosis 1. So that meiosis 2 takes place for those two cells at the same time. And the process is exactly the same. So here, single chromosomes visible. Uh, they line up in the equator of the cell in metaphase. Now chromatids will be pulled apart to the opposite poles. Uh, centromere will be hydrolyzed. And uh, in the process of telophase cytokinesis, we will get two genetically different daughter cells. So 
What is then crossing over? Crossing over, as we've mentioned, takes place in the meiosis one, in the prophase one. So when the maternal and paternal chromosomes come to a closer, they twist around each other's and they uh, and they will break off the, uh, the 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 parts of the chromatids to exchange them. So the uh, so the same portions will be exchanged. That's what we call crossing over. That results in the section of chromatids being exchanged. Those new sections now exchange sections will have different. Uh, so the new combinations of linked alleles, new genetic combinations of maternal and paternal alleles will be produced, increasing the genetic variation. Okay, so if the crossing over is not taking place, we will only have two different types of cells that would be produced. But because of the crossing over, as you can see here, that chromatid that one's different, same dose. So all of those uh, are different now. So, uh, again, just a quick diagram to show you the position, the loci of the, of the gene and the alleles, okay? So, on the maternal and paternal chromosome being exchanged, uh, leading to the genetic variation. Right. So, we were looking at the, uh, at the crossing over, and we've got a question to explain how crossing over can contribute to genetic variation. So what we need to be looking at is, of course, the exchange of the alleles. Okay, so sections of the chromatids, it's exchange sections will have then different alleles. So as the FN, we've got new combinations of Alleles. So everything is about the exchanging chromatids and producing different uh, combinations of alleles. Right, so let's have a look at this one. So you've got uh, figure one to show, uh, we need to complete the figure one to show um, the alleles present on the marked position. So remember, each of those chromosomes, one is maternal, one is paternal, so they carry the same genes at the same locations, but they might have different alleles. So what we should be getting, okay, it's the sequence as here. So A, okay, we will have the capital uh, capital A here, so the dominant allele, recessive alleles on the uh, on the other chromosome. Same follow up with the uh, dominant B on one of the chromosomes, so it must be the recessive on the other. And figure two shows us the crossing over. So, um, so in terms of the crossing over, remember we will exchange alleles between uh, chromatids, between chromosomes. What is then the independent segregation? What we've mentioned. So, uh, independent segregation and assortment. So, starting with the assortment, it's the way the bivalent, so the uh, homologous pair of the chromosomes will line up in the middle of the cell. So as we've mentioned, we've got different combinations. So this is possibility number one. Let's say that the paternal chromosomes are a first, maternal second here, where they are mixed up. So as the effect, we're getting different combinations of the cells. So what is then the independent segregation? This is the part, the part when those chromosomes will be split apart, okay? And that at the end, we're getting different daughter sets. Right, so there is the example of how the uh, independent uh, assortment and segregation contributes to different, different gametes. So you can have a look at that. Right, so the cell produces gametes by meiosis and draw a diagram to show the chromosomes in one of the gametes. Right, so this is uh, this is the diploid cell that will produce uh, gametes. Gametes is a haploid cell, so you should only have three chromosomes, one from each homologous pair. So you should join one long chromosome, one lollipop-shaped chromosome, and one dot. And how many different types of gametes could be produced from this cell as a result of different combinations of maternal and paternal chromosome? Uh, the answer will be eight. 
Okay, why is it eight? Because we've got uh, uh, three different chromosomes, two pairs.